Hey everybody, welcome to another video from Small Engine Velocity. I hope I got the, the mic facing the right way. So, anyways, today's video is a basic or stock ruckus thing that everybody needs to know how to do because if you pull your ruckus or any vehicle with a carburetor outside of your garage and it has not started for a while, more than likely you're going to have to do this. Now, keep in mind, it's a little bit involved uh, and there's a lot of small pieces, so if you're not comfortable with it, then find a local shop to go ahead and get it done. This will kind of give you an idea of what needs to be done in order to be able to clean your carb and get it working again. Uh, at the same time, you can also change your jets or whatnot with your carburetor, but in this video, we're just going to try to clean it up uh, and get it started. Uh, a little bit of history, this ruckus has probably been sitting idle for over a year now, maybe two years unstarted, so it looks like the jets are stuck. The video before this or after this, whatever you want to call it, I was doing a fuel pump replacement and after I got the fuel pump in, it didn't start. It would turn and pump fuel, but it, it never actually started. So in the middle of making that video, I'm making this video. So let's check it out. Uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and roll the intro. So first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the carb. So on a stock ruckus, the carb is, it's really right in the middle. So you're gonna have to take the plastic off. You're gonna have, to, let's do that again. You're gonna have to take the plastic, you're gonna have to take the plastic off. You're gonna have to take the seat off and all that on above it because there's just really no way to access this without taking it off. Now, there's a lot of things like, like little cables right here that you're gonna have to remove and hoses and screws down here and, and the connector to the carb and the fuel line and the whatever. I, I'm not gonna make this video about how to take the carb out. All you have to do is take everything out. Remember how you did it. If you don't remember, if you don't know if you can remember how you did it, then take pictures or get a video camera and record with your phone how you're taking it apart so you can reference it later to be able to put it back together again. Let's go ahead and do a little time lapse of getting this carburetor out. carburetor and it doesn't look actually that bad. It looks actually pretty new. Uh, so to explain, these two right here are your radiator lines for your uh, coolant to go through here. It's not so much to keep it cool, but in the colder states, it's to run warm water to get your carb warmed up for you. Then you have your fuel, which fills your float bowl down here. Then you have your intake side right here. Then you have your exit side, and this goes into your intake manifold into your motor. Uh, I believe this is the auto choke. And then, oh my gosh, I forgot already. I believe this is your auto choke, and this is something else that plugs into your ECU. <laughs> Anyways, the first thing you're going to do is get the float bowl off. So this is where the fuel pump pumps fuel into. There's a little reservoir that's inside of here that your fuel pumps into that your carburetor uses. Your carburetor does, your fuel pump doesn't pump fuel directly into the, into the, the jets or anything. It pumps it into here. And this is where the fuel is stored while you're waiting, while you're 
accelerating, decelerating, and stuff like that. So be careful, there's gonna be a lot of gas in here when it comes out and probably should have drained it first. Uh, just in case you're wondering, there's a little drain right here that you can turn, ah, that you can turn and then the fuel will come out the bottom. Ugh, look at that. It's pretty bad. So, a lot of stuff gooped up inside of here. And if you can tell on the jets, the jets look like they have corrosion on them also. Keep in mind this is 49cc, so the holes are very, very small. So, a little explanation. The float bowl sits in here, and as the bowl fills up, this goes up, and when it goes all the way up to the top, then it, it, it pushes a shutoff valve and it, the bowl can't fill anymore with the fuel pump. So if the fuel pump goes off, it can't push any fuel. But as soon as the motor starts to run and it burns fuel away, and this starts to go down, then it lets fuel back into the flow bowl again. So if all you wanna do is check the jets, then this is where you wanna go. Then you wanna take these jets out. The one that's taller is your main jet or your, your high flow or your high RPM, or your wide open throttle, whatever you want to call it. It's made of brass, so please be careful with it. And then this is your slow jet, so I think this is 75% uh, of throttle or less, something like that. And it's got corrosion all over it. I don't know if you can tell. Here's a test to see how much, if, if this is good or not. This is a test to see how plugged this jet is. Is, is, it, is, it, is there corrosion in here or not? So let's look. So the first thing you're gonna do is face your face to the sun. Then you're gonna go, I hope I can do this, and you're going to put the jet towards the sky or the light. This isn't gonna work. <laughs> and you're gonna try to look through it, okay? I'll show you. So you're gonna pull the jet up, put it towards the light source, and see if you can see through. And you should see a little bit of light through the hole, and I absolutely cannot see anything through here. <laughs> it's completely plugged. Uh, then you go through the slow jet, do the same thing with the slow jet right here, and then look through it lengthwise, and also check these little holes to the side here also, but check lengthwise. Look, put it to a light source and try to look through it. And I see nothing here too. So how do we clean that? The best way is to find a piece of wire, uh, preferably copper, this is not copper. Uh, and then try to poke it through the hole like this to clean it out, right? This is so bad that I can't even poke wire through it right now. Dude, it's bad really bad so these need to be cleaned regardless also clean your float bowl this stuff will float back up into your fuel and then shoot through your jets you don't want that if you want to clean your whole carb then there's a pin right here right be careful with this pin got to keep it don't lose it very important can't put it back together without it take the float bowl off the, the float off and there's a little floaty thing in here. This is for the valve to shut off whenever you're uh, oops. whenever you're in here. It if you look on the bottom it fits in here and hangs. If you can see it, it hangs from here. And then remember that this hangs towards the bottom side. It should never be taller. Okay? Then we'll take the diaphragm off, okay? Very easy. There's a lid right here, right? Take the lid off, but hold it down because inside there's a spring. Very important, don't lose this spring. The diaphragm is very important that it stays sealed, so don't manhandle it and take it out gently. Okay, and there's a needle, so don't yank it so that it doesn't bend, okay? Then, you could take the electronics off. It's not very hard. 
it's not very hard to take that one off. And this one right here, you can see a little screw that holds a clamp to hold this on. So take that screw off. And this will come out. So now you're left with just the carb. Now you can get carb cleaner, that stuff that you buy at the AutoZone or wherever, and just jet out all of it. Like just shoot it through the main jet here, here, every hole that you can see, try to shove fluid through. Now this is different to me because there's the air fuel and it's a flat head. On mine it was some kind of special moon shaped thing that you had to use, but I guess they changed it. So jet all this stuff out, clean it, let it dry, or you can do this, and this is how I do it. So I have an ultrasonic cleaner. This is a three liter, I believe. And what it does is it heats the water right here. You can set it to a Fahrenheit temp and then a timer and what it does is it shoots ultrasonic waves at it bzzz, and it makes stuff break off of whatever part you're throwing in there uh, for today's example i'm just going to use uh, water you can put uh, soap simple green or some type of mild solvent if there if you want but i'm not going to do that today and i'm just going to throw the pieces in here uh you can kind of hear what it sounds like and you can kind of see the crazy ripples and stuff happening in the water because of it. Actually, you probably weren't even able to hear me just a moment ago because every time I try to record while doing the ultrasonic, no one can hear me. So let's go ahead and get this set up and we'll do a time lapse of the stuff sitting in there, okay? car back together again we're gonna go ahead and put it in the bike uh, basically just reverse the uh, the way you took it out use that referenced video or photos that I told you earlier now if you notice there's some screws on the bottom be careful with those those will strip easily uh, so my recommendation is if you could take those screws and get them matched with some Allen wrench ones uh, you can go to ace or true value or whatever they'll all have them uh, get them in stainless uh, it's easier especially if you're tuning a lot you're going to take it off and on a lot eventually those screws will strip if you don't have that special uh, screwdriver that is made by I don't know, the Japanese or something like that so let's go ahead and put this in and let's see if we get it to start yes
So this wouldn't start earlier. Uh, obviously the jets were super, super clogged. So now that they're clean and free, we're gonna, and we got everything hooked up, we're gonna turn the key. Let, let the fuel pump pump a few times. There's not a lot of gas in here, so I have to tilt the tank. Okay, so I'll keep turning it. Pumps a bunch of times. Turn the key off, turn it on. Let it pump a few times again. And one more time. Let it pump some fuel in there. Maybe that's a little bit excessive in the number of times I tried, but it's okay. Now that it's on, let's see if we can start it. Uh-oh. I saw it. I heard it. Uh-oh. Looks like I'll have to do a valve video. Let's go to the other side. Start. Come to life. There you go. She lives. This bike has not ran in a long time. So this is great news. Uh, I mean, it's not running great. Perfect. But uh, I, I have the kit to do the valves, so that's the next video. But anyways, I hope you guys got something out of this video and that you kind of see what's involved in it and whether you want to get someone else to do it or you do it. Uh, you can do it with basic tools. It's not really that hard. Just go buy a can of uh, carb cleaner and some stuff and you should be able to take care of it. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you see something, if you like this and you want to see more, go ahead and click that bell also so that we can uh, get notifications. You can get notifications. You get notifications. Anyways, thank you and I'll talk to you in the next video.